my my last question has to do with uh, you remember when he now became the president of Ghana, when he eventually became a democratically elected president from 1989 to 2001. You remember that. Now, he made sure that everything that has to do with Ghana in terms of sailing them through the rough path and making things smooth. From what you can see now, the Ghana of what he did and the guy now of now just opposite with the relationship that Ghana and Nigeria has currently. How do you think that we can mend things to two countries? Well, despite our occasional altercations and skirmishes, I believe Ghana is still the closest country to Nigeria in Africa uh, in various ways. When you look at Nigeria as the big brother, Nigeria is a bigger brother to Ghana. When it comes to oil and gas, don't forget that for years, Ghana relied heavily on the Nigerian oil and gas. Even in terms of security, uh, especially during the time of President Ulusha Obasanjo, Nigeria did so much for Ghana because President Obasanjo and President John Ajekun Kufo had a special relationship between them. As a matter of fact, the longest route in Accra is named Olusegun Obasanjo Way and was there the day it was launched. That was under President Kufo. Um, what is causing problem between us is like what is causing problem everywhere else, especially in South Africa, is that Ghanaians find Nigerian traders much more aggressive. You know that Nigerians are like the Americans of Africa. Yeah. We're very aggressive, very ambitious, you know, and sometimes overtly forceful. Yeah. Whereas <laughs> Ghanaians are very relaxed people. In fact, I used to say that if we could combine the speed of Nigerians with the reticence of Ghanaians, that we have a perfect society. Nigerians are a bit too fast, while Nigerians think Ghanaians are a bit slow. So Ghanaians think Nigerians are too fast. So if we could meet halfway, I'm one of the few people I believe who came from Nigeria and was able to blend very well into the Ghanaian society. I know practically most people in Ghana and Virtually everybody in Ghana knows me in, in the country. Even the truck truck drivers who are like our own truck drivers in Nigeria. They all, because you see, I realized that what Ghanaians love is to be treated with respect. They don't want us to bring our gra gra from Lagos and load it over them. So, and like they say, when you are in Rome, you must like learn Rome. how to behave like Romans. Mm -hmm. So don't go to another man's country and think they're just going to allow you to run riots. I believe there is so much we have to gain from Ghana, and Ghana has so much to gain from Nigeria. I mean, Nigeria is surrounded by French-speaking countries, the Francophone countries. So the nearest Francophone country to Nigeria is Ghana. And if you look at intermarriage, you will find out that a lot of Ghanaian women married so many prominent Nigerians. So many Ghanaian women are married and they live in Nigeria. And also, now I find that even the current president of Ghana, who I call the great Nana Akufuado, his first wife was Femi Fanika of this sister. So, wow. you know, you know that. yeah, so he has children yeah. who are half Nigerian. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people don't know that fact. 
Wow. So, and if you look at even Africa's greatest diplomat of all time, Dr. Kofi Annan, Dr. Kofi Annan, Dr. Annan, yeah. yes, also married from the Alakida family in Nigeria. Yeah. And they also have children who are half Nigerians. Yeah. So it's, it's very difficult for anybody to separate us. Uh, if you look at the late Baba Adiri, Alagi, Wahabi, Yoda Folawiyo, Sisi Abba also has a roots in Ghana. Yeah. That is uh, Sisi Abba Princess, Abba Folawiyo, yeah. also has a roots. Yeah. If you look at, you know, Mr. Akin Belo of Sagi, everybody knows about the former chairman of UBA. Yeah. You know, and it is a lot. His wife, Auntie Maima, is from Ghana. So we have so, so we, we have a long history of intermarriages. Uh, Chief Tunde Edu of Blessed Memory, his wife is from Ghana. We we we, we Chief Dele Fagye Miroku, his wife is from Ghana. So we have so many, so many. Uh, Ghanaians who have married in Nigeria and vice versa. Okay, so definitely uh, we would have to continue to live together in harmony. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I, I thought that was going to be my last question. <laughs> Lastly, what, what example should African leaders learn from J.J. Rollins? legacy while he was alive. Is that we must learn to unite. If you look at the crisis, the ongoing crisis in Nigeria, it's lack of unity. Africans cannot continue to live perpetually in stupidity because it is stupid of anybody to think that any tribe is superior to the other. The moment you respect me and I deserve respect, the gets respect. So when you respect me and I respect you, you will see that we can live in harmony. But what we have in most parts of Africa is based on ethnicity and religion. So if someone is not from your area, then that person should not have a decent life. That is unfortunate. So Rollins was one man who fought for the rights of man. He fought for the rights, and it didn't matter where you came from. He was from Volta region, but he was at home with the Ashantis. He was at home with the Northerners in Ghana. He was at home with the Gar. His daughter is a member of parliament today from Greater Accra. So you, that's to tell you how much he felt at home with everybody. So it's very important for a leader to be detribalized. It is very important for a leader not to be a religious fundamentalist. <laughs> it's a great lesson that we all need to learn, especially in Nigeria. All right, thank and you very much. We will always remember President Jerry Rollins. All right, thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, your time. And of course, I'm really, really happy that you did this for us. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. And uh, I pray that all will continue to go well uh, with your channel. All right, Take thank good you. care. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. All right.